Thermodynamics of Borax Solubility. In this lab, you will be determining the delta H and delta S values for the reaction which occurs when borax dissolves in water. This lab requires five 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flasks, a bottle of borax, indicator solution, a burette, and 0.3 molar HCl. You will also need a hot plate. The first step does not require weighing. Obtain a sample of solid borax and put it in a small 100 milliliter beaker. Fill it up to the 40 milliliter mark. Transfer borax into 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. Add approximately 80 mils of distilled water to this. Place this flask into a 600 milliliter beaker of water. The beaker will serve as a heating bath. Heat the bath very gently until the bath temperature and solution are at approximately 55 degrees Celsius. Insert the thermometer into your flask and stir mixture gently while heating. When the mixture has reached 55 degrees Celsius, continue to heat it and stir gently. You want to maintain the temperature in the range of 53 to 57 degrees Celsius for about 15 minutes. Stir the borax mixture gently throughout this heating and swirl it vigorously from time to time. You should see some solid borax in the flask at all times. If all the borax disappears, Add more, approximately five grams of borax. During this heating, the solid will come to equilibrium with the aqueous ions. Part B, collecting samples. Clean and label five 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flasks. You can label them 50, 40, 30, 20, and 10 degrees Celsius. For this next part, you will use the main flask that contained the dissolved borax. Turn off the hot plate and place the thermometer into the main flask. Leave the flask in the bath and allow the temperature to drop slowly to 52 degrees, stirring constantly. Once the temperature has reached 52 degrees, stop stirring and allow the solid to settle on the bottom of the flask. The temperature will continue to drop. When it reaches 50 degrees, quickly pour between 7 and 9 milliliters of the solution into a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. Try to avoid pouring any solid. Swirl the flask. Measure the temperature in the flask to plus or minus 0.1 degrees Celsius and record the temperature. Now remove the flask from the bath and let it cool gradually, swirling it frequently, and monitor its temperature. Transfer this solution into your first flask marked 50 degrees Celsius. There may be borax left in the cylinder. Rinse this with distilled water and add to the flask. Now you will repeat this same procedure for the following temperatures. 40 degrees, 30 degrees, 20 degrees, and 10 degrees Celsius. As you repeat these procedures at lower temperatures, be sure to let the solutions cool gradually. For the 30 degrees Celsius, do not use an ice bath. You should try to allow at least 10 minutes for each 10 degrees decrease in temperature. For your 20 degree and 10 degree samples, you will need to place your borax solution in an ice bath. We are now moving on to part C, titrating the borax samples. For this part, rinse a burette three times with small portions of the standardized HCl solution provided. To rinse the burette, hold the burette sideways and allow the HCl solution to wash the sides of the burette while pouring it into a beaker. Rinse the burette three times. Now that the burette is rinsed, add HCl solution 
to the burette. Fill it close to the top line, which is zero. If you go past zero, drain some down into the waste beaker. Be sure to record your initial volume. Put five drops of bromocresol green indicator into each of your flasks. The indicator is blue in basic solutions and yellow in acidic solutions. Titrate the samples with standardized HCL solution. S slowly add HCL solution. Be sure to titrate slowly. The endpoint should be green. Remember to record the initial and final burette readings to the hundredth decimal place, 0 0.01 milliliters. To achieve an optimal titration, you want to adjust the stopcock on the burette so that it delivers drop by drop. You can even split drops into halves or quarters. Let a drop form part way, close the stopcock, and then touch the flask to the partially formed drop. Record the final burette reading to the hundredth decimal place, 0 0.01 milliliters. You will perform this for all five temperatures. You will discover that as the temperature decreases, you will use less HCL solution for your titrations.